it's Monica from Pear Tree Treasures and what we're gonna do this is going to be the tutorial for the potting bench that I made and I posted all of this in a preview on scrapbookers of country craft creations this specific one I made with the frontier collection by authentique um, you can get this right now if you hurry up at countrycraftcreations.com uh, I know Tamara has a little bit of it left and she's like buddies with the people at Authentique and their puppies are buddies and so if she's out of it at the shop I'm sure you can send her an email and she'll be able to get this paper for you again this is the Frontier collection okay but what I'm gonna do is with the tutorial because you know there is going to be um, I'm going to post a video showing the whole review of the album, okay? There is one already on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, that's the Facebook page, but what I'm going to do for the tutorial is I'm going to use the Spring Market Collection. Uh, Tamara sent me this collection as part of my design team package. Thank you, Tamara. Isn't this pretty? All oh, these papers are so pretty. Okay, so that's, we're going to make it out of this one okay and once you do it with this one I'm sure you'll be able to figure out how to do it with the Frontier collection okay so what I've done for you guys I'm sure we'll have to break this up into parts so it's not incredibly boring what I've done is I have put all of the measurements onto the chipboard so you're so far as far as I figured you're probably gonna need uh, two of the spring market collections because I'm also doing the album underneath that fits underneath this um, so if you're gonna go to the store pick up two okay and I'm also gonna show you guys when I do my next tutorial for my um, the album with the lay flat binding I'm probably gonna use spring market for that one as well so anyway let's get started with this here you're gonna like I said you're gonna need four pieces of chipboard to start out with okay so this is what we're gonna work on first so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see the measurements okay you can screenshot this I don't know what you guys do on Mac I know there is a snipping tool that you guys can use in Windows just push pause at this point and you can use a snipping tool okay I can't see the video until I post it so if there's gonna be issues with that you guys I think I'll put a cutting guide on scrapbookers okay of country craft creations as well um, and then well, I'm pretty sure you guys can see this so over here you might not be able to see this these are quarter of an inch strips in here okay and I'll just hold this up so that you guys can see it okay these marks here, these are the end marks for this square that you have to cut out. Okay, this here, do not cut. This is a score line in the middle of this. So I just laid it out for you guys so you can just take a picture of this. Okay, so this is page one, or chipboard page one, I guess, right? Okay. So, hopefully you guys can see that. This is going to be page two of the chipboard. Okay, hopefully you guys push pause. Don't forget to push pause. Okay. And as I'm going through this and I'm cutting it out, I'll help you guys out and I'll, I'm sure I'll be reading the measurements as I'm cutting this out because I'm going to actually cut out this chipboard that I've got marked okay and then you'll also see what order to do it in so um, the way I did it is so that I tried to use minimal amount of chipboard so four pieces is all I got people that's the minimum amount okay and I also wrote on here what each piece is for all right and here's the page oops stay there okay here's page four by the way if you hear me get up or if I scream I have for some reason the mouse the mice have decided to invade my home and I'm raging war on them so behind me is my kitchen and I have two 
kind of humane mousetrap dealio setup. Uh, and they're, you know, I just take the mousetrap, pick it up, and put the mouse outside. But the dog will hear it, so I can only do it while I'm doing this. So, okay. Anyway, so this is your cutting guide. Okay. So now I've already cut out a lot of this. All right. Um, the first cut you want to make, of course, is going to be down here. And that's for this piece here. So what I'm going to show you. So that'll be this piece. All right. I'm going to set this aside for now. All right. So that is this piece here. All right. We're going to use this middle section. So you're going to cut this right out of there. And then these pieces here, I'm going to be using these to fill them in, so I've already covered them. We're going to do that too, okay? So these are all cut out of here. So you guys see what I mean? I made good use of the chipboard, okay? So I cut this piece out like that. So you guys go ahead and cut all this out, all right? And then we can continue on. So. First thing that I'm going to do, after I get my pieces cut out, I'm going to use the front piece for now. We're going to take the center section and cut these out of here. And these are just quarter inch strips. Okay. We're going to be using as well, hold on, I got more. On here, you'll see there's three quarter of an inch strips here. All right, now I made them a little longer on the cutting guide. So this goes right across here because it's all in your preference. And I'll show you what, as we assemble this, I'll show you. So cut it longer, it's better to cut it longer than shorter, right? Too much is better than not enough, all right? Now, so you're gonna need the slats that you cut out you're gonna need this, okay? And that's this piece here. And then there's another one up here, okay? These here you're gonna need, okay? So take these, set them here. There's two of those, two of those. Your eight inches by two and a half pieces should have two of those. Oops. Well. Okay. And that is here. And here. Okay. Need those and this that. What else? Let's see. I think that's it for now for this part of the tutorial. Okay. So here's all the pieces we have. So now what you want to do is you want to figure out, okay, what paper you're going to be using. There's options. Um, there's definitely options. But what I want you to do is go into your paper pack and find the Market Planters paper. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to crack open my other pack here. Show you what I mean. Here's the new one. Can't see this. Throw that away. All my scrappies and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna find that paper right now. These papers look pretty. Okay, you're gonna need out of the paper pack. You may as well, I'm going to have this out, you may as well pull them all out. Okay, so you're going to need this sheet of paper, which is the one that I was telling you about, Market Planters it's called. Alright, that's on the back. You're going to need this sheet, 3x4 journaling cards, see what I mean people? 
this is on the back of that. You definitely have to have two packs of paper. Just saying. Two packs. Okay. Now, you have an option. Okay. And I was going to do this. And then I kind of opted out. I, I still might. I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens. You can, always use, you can also use the white wood. Okay. This is wreath decor. It's called the paper. This is the backside of this paper. Okay. So, like I said, pretty sure you're going to need two paper packs for this. I, for now, am going to use... I think we're going to need all three, actually. Yeah, I'm going to need all three. Flat with it. Okay. So, what I want you guys to do... Now, this is my other pack. I haven't opened it yet. All right. Um, with this sheet here, I want you to cut along all of these. Okay, we're going to use these as construction strips, and we're going to use them to cover these pieces here. Alright, so I want you to cut all these pieces out in a long line, and a long, in a long line, you know, kidding, right? You guys have no idea. It's pretty late. So, we have that piece, okay, and that is going to end up being neat. Okay, so that's the market planters, this. You can use any wood paper, okay? Uh, you just want to make it one inch, because these are all approximately one inch, okay? So, one inch is the way to go with these. Now, like I said, pull apart, you got to pull, set aside that, you got to set aside that, and set aside this, okay? Just in case. Now, so with this one here, cut it out. If you're using another wood paper, use one inch strips. I'm going to set this over here. Now, with this piece here, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to take your box pieces, because every trim is different, okay, and what I want you to do. So this is the sides of your box, or sorry, this is the front of your box, and this is the sides, okay? And I made this two ways. One, it's wide enough to fit all of my seed packs in, okay? So here's a seed pack, I'll show you. So it just fits my seed pack in the box once it's made, okay? But also, I didn't make it so big that I couldn't fully utilize the width of the 12-inch paper, okay? So, what I want you guys to do is take this paper, and I want you to cut two strips, okay? And I want you to cut them this way, okay? And I want you to cut them at two and a half inches. All right, so you're going to end up with two pieces. Let's get it for you because I already cut it. Okay, so you're going to end up with two pieces. Like this. Okay, it's this way. All right. So cut it out like that. All right. Set this aside, don't use it. Okay, so here's what we have. And we have these. Alright, so everybody has their preference, of course, with whatever adhesive you guys are going to use, right? Let me move this paper out of the way here. Okay. So, you've got all of your little pieces here. You need four of these. You need three of these. I did a couple of extras just because I am figure while I'm here doing this, I may as well do a couple extra pieces with the covered paper so I can decorate with them later because I have ideas about what I'm going to do with that. So, basically, 
the way you do this is the same. Um, try to squeeze everything together as best you can. Basically what I did is I flipped it over. Okay, so here's your wood side, wood grain side paper. And I flipped it over and I just laid these right along here. And they're still sticky. Okay, and don't worry because wood naturally has blemishes and marks in them and we're going to ink the edges of this up anyway so I laid it down now I used adhesive I use score tape on this and I just ran a piece of score tape down here you guys can use glue you can use the art glitter glue whatever you want okay I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys so no messing around so take one of your strips now every trimmer is different you might need to use two of these strips no panic okay because there's going to be enough to finish this project okay so then I just laid it all in here all right so laid them all in and again doesn't matter what adhesive you use doesn't matter if you're just a little on the edge or a little over the edge don't worry because we're going to be inking this okay if you don't want to ink it if it's hanging over the edge here grab another piece of paper okay like that all right so example this is this little piece is hanging over this edge so I'll just, I would just put it on another piece I'm not worried about it okay so what I do is once I glue it down I use um, the score tape for this just because it's easier for me to cut through it so I lay it down I adhere it to the paper okay so here's this extra piece and I get my razor blade okay and then I just it, it acts as a guide for when you're cutting it so I just basically slide it in and we'll pretend that this is glued down and I just cut down each one and then it's perfect then you can also cut the edges off if there's any edge showing so it's a little easier that way for me and might be easier that way for you guys too. try it you never know but everybody has their own ways of doing it. Basically what we're doing is we're covering the four of the smaller pieces, which are four and a half by one quarter, okay? And we're also doing these, okay? So cover those completely. I think you're gonna need probably two or three. Cover both sides if you plan on seeing the shelf, or pardon me, seeing the project from behind. Okay, you don't have to cover both sides if you don't want to. You can even paint the other side. So if you just wanted to use one strip or you wanted to conserve it, feel free to do that. Okay, so we have our strips covered. Of course, did that to save time because, you know, people don't like watching long videos. Okay. See, that was my little piece I had extra. I'm going to put this aside. Now, I want to show you how to do this. So, here's the sides. Let's put those over there. This over here. Now, this is the square that I wanted you guys to cut out. Okay, so how you are going to lay these here are going to fit right in here perfectly because you cut them out of this square. That's why I did that. I wanted to inset into here. So for now, we're going to do a dry fit, okay? And I'm going to show you guys the measurements as soon as I fit all these in here. Let's see. I do, oh, I marked it on the other side, sorry. Oh my gosh. There it is. Okay, there's my marks. I already did all this once. Okay. Now, this is just a dry fit, just to show you guys, okay? And again, every trimmer is different, so you never know what you're going to get. So always just make sure that everything's going to fit in here good, okay? I'm going to set them all in, and then I'm going to show you the measurements, okay? So like that. Okay, how are you going to put this over? So 
again. I just want to make sure they're all even, right? guys get to watch me struggle. Don't be me. Okay, there. Now, I measured this because I know exactly when I did the original project, I knew because I used um, my Cricut machine that I have. So I just did it all on Corel Draw and transferred it over. But because you guys don't have that, I'm going to tell you what the measurement is. Okay. From the inside here, what I did was, I did, so I made a mark from the inside of here, okay, this is inch and a quarter, this is two and a half, this is three and three quarters, and this is five, okay, and I did the exact same thing at the top. And I just put a little pencil mark. I wonder if I'll be able to pick this up. Okay. You see how I have a pencil mark there? So it's one and one and one quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. Okay. I'm gonna sort of make sure. Yes. Okay. And what I did once I did that is I laid all of it, so if I'm looking at it like this, I put it to that side. Okay, now you'll see, you're not really gonna tell. Um, this, it's pretty even, but you're not gonna be able to tell. So, I mean, depending how, how perfect you want it, that's all fine and dandy, everything's good, but uh, that's why we're doing a dry fit. Okay, so you can only do this after this is all covered too, right? We're going to cover this as well, but I just want to show you guys what I mean by dry fit. So, I also laid these then on top of here. Okay, actually, do this. And this is the same marks, because these squares are an inch and a quarter. Okay, when you look at it from this way. So in here, it's an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. I know it doesn't look like that from your guys' angle, maybe. Okay. So we can go on the top of that. So make sure that you got everything done, you mark everything so that you understand that it fits in there good, everything's good, okay? So that's how you want it to be. So then what I'm going to do is you make sure it's all even, and then what you do is you can pick this up, use my art glitter glue, okay? Let's make sure I got this on the right mark. Shouldn't have picked that up, eh? There. Take it off there. Okay, so see, I'm not really measuring. Okay, I'm just making sure it's even on both sides, right? And then what I'm gonna do, because I have this little line here, see this? I'm gonna use this line, and I'm just gonna draw it blue. There and there and there. Now, make sure before you set it down that it's even on the top and the bottom because once you glue this down, you can't move these around, right? So that's why I want you to dry fit it and then you make sure everything's lined up properly. Okay, so like that. Push 
it down. Okay. Now see, I got this a little off over here. It doesn't really matter. I can just chop this off. If I'm gonna do that, I wanna do it before the glue dries. I don't want to lift it all up because it's a pain in the butt. I'm just showing you guys little different recovery tools. Should it happen to you? Okay. Like that. Okay. So there. There you go. Okay, so that's even on both sides. Now you have this one down. You, you're gonna end up pulling this back up anyway. I'm just doing this so you guys can line it up. So we have to cover this too, right? So don't like slather a ton of glue on there. All right, we're just gonna stick our nail under there or stick whatever, or we're gonna pick it up before it dries and we're just gonna lift this up and pull it off. Okay, and then we're gonna end up covering this. So the first one is important because you want everything to line up, right? So you kind of want to tack it down a little bit. But we don't want it to tack down forever. Okay. And the art glitter glue is great because it dries clear. You can't see any of my glue errors on my other project. Okay, so now this is in there good. Oops, it's actually stuck down there. I didn't pick it up enough. Don't worry about tearing anything because we're going to be covering it all anyway, okay? So now, you want to take your other strips. I'm going to give you the measurements here. So this again, like I said, it's a quarter inch square here. So my mark is at... So this is one and a quarter here. And I've set it on that side of the one quarter of an inch mark. And this is two and a half. Okay? is your next mark and you're going to set it that way on the two and a half mark and this one is three and three quarters okay so carry on <laughs> So this is what I have. Okay, so you want to set this and let it dry for a little bit. Now, I did this purposely to show you guys. You know how sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I wanted to ink that and forgot to ink it. Well, you know, there's markers, right? There's all kinds of different markers. I happen to have my Stampin' Up! markers because, you know, that's what I have. You could use watercolor markers, you can use a Sharpie, you can basically use whatever you want. So basically you just pick the color, let me see, you want to use, I don't know which one I want to use. I'm going to use this one. It's a little dark, meh. Mm. I have some lighter ones, what's this one? It's like a Tim Holtz one. Let's see how it looks. No, it's too green. Too greenish. That's definitely not going to work. Oh, what have I done? Okay. Oh, here's a good one. Let's see what this is. This will work. You can use lighter, darker, it doesn't really matter. Oh, perfect. Excuse my arm, people. Okay, so. This is coming out because obviously you have to cover this with paper. But now you don't have to worry about lining it up. And you don't have to put pencil marks on your pretty paper because you've already done it. Okay, so this is why I did it like that. So you guys know that this is lined up and it's going to stick in there and it's not going to stick in any other way. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pop it out. And that's it. 
Okay, so that's our lattice. Don't worry about this again, because that is going to stick back on there, and you're not even going to see it. Right? Now, if you've forgotten to ink, which I do a lot, okay, like I said, you can just use your marker. So now is the time where I am going to go in. This, and it's all about the details, people. Okay. So you can go in and use a darker one, a lighter one. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And I just like to go back in and cover all this up. Okay, well, I've done that. I did all of my edges. That's the bottom. So you're not going to see that. Okay, and this, again, is just going to go right into here when you're done. Okay. I just add a little extra more wood grain. It wasn't enough for me. Okay. So now we're going to cover this. I think I'm going to go with the white. And because we have two of these collections, we can do that. Okay? So, what I'm going to do, again, you're going to need two collections. Um, if you're going to cover front and back, if you're not, you can probably get away with one. But, like I said, at least you make a mistake, you might want to get that second pack. Okay, so I'm going to just take this. I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to glue this down to here. Okay. I can use this side, and then I can just erase this. Because I used pencil to mark that. Okay. So, I'm just going to use my art glitter glue. go. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to cover this with the art glitter glue and I'm going to make sure I have my spatula, my tool, whatever I need, whatever you guys use. Well, that isn't happy with me right now. Now, I know some of you guys say, oh, well, it bubbles up when I use the art glitter glue. If you spread it out quick enough, it doesn't bubble up, okay? So you don't, you, you don't really need a whole lot of the art glitter glue, okay? So I'm just running a bead along here. The main part that you really want to cover well is along the edges, okay? So I'm going to do this. because you don't want your paper lifting up, okay? And then you're going to spread it all out anyway. Okay, so just make sure you're going to move in here. And then I'm going to flip this over. And I'm just going to stick it. Now you want to make sure it's directional. Okay, I want my boards to be going the other way. And then line it up along the edge like that push it down like this squish some glue out spread it out on this side first and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make sure that I spread out all of the glue and then you won't get the lumpies Wipe that off. If 
By the way, people, this is a dried out baby wipe. Okay. That's what I use. So. Little trick I learned from Tamara. Okay, and now that I've done that, obviously you want to make sure the glue is set. Okay. But I'm just going to make sure I don't push too hard and I'm just going to cut along the edge. Make sure I've gone all the way through. And again, I'm using this as a guide. I'm not cutting into it. I've got my blade positioned so that it's just leaning against the chipboard and it cuts perfect. And there's no fuss, no muss, no measuring, no worries. Just trim it off like that. Okay, and I didn't go through all the way there, so I'm just going to go over it again. There we go. Save all of these. I'm sure you'll end up needing them at some point. Okay, so as you can see, I did this purposely to show you why this way, the way I do it, I like this way the best because, for example, if you've cut your chipboard or cut, if you cut the piece of paper too big, you know, you would do this as well at the same time. But because I do it this way, I just can hold it like this. And I just snap my blade. And just trim off the excess. Okay, and I'm not forcing it. I'm not going real hard. I'm just kind of leaning against that right there. And I did snap the tip off my blade so it's not not happening right now. Okay, and then see how it's a little bit free? You just run this along there. And flatten it out. There we go. Okay, oops. Flatten that out. Okay, now I can do my inside. So now, you pop this in here, see how nice that looks, pop it in like that, and it fits well. Okay, so you want to make it even at this point too, alright, so when you push it down in there, just make sure it's even on these sides. Okay, so I just lightly kind of set it there, and now at this point you can glue these down. Okay, into here. Getting it up upside down. So maybe not. Okay, so in my original project, I'll show you. I'll just go grab it. In the original project, I had cut out the bottom. So you can do that at this point as well if you want to. Okay? And just cut these out. And I am actually going to do that right now. flying. Okay. So there we go. There. Okay. And I like the fact that it's going to be white and then you're going to have the darker wood and then for the box, which is what we're going to create next. So I'm going to glue this down right now. Okay, and I'm just going to put it, oops, glue this first.
like that. Easy. Easy peasy. Wipe off your excess glue. Again, it's no big deal. But, and now I'm not going to ink in here because it's the, the paper's white and you can't really see it. So I'm kind of not going to ink. I don't feel I'm going for that look right now. Okay. And there's that piece done. So that is the back. And you're all done. If you want to make it more secure, um, we're going to put a shelf in here. And then you'll see that you can glue the shelf to these pieces here. Okay. So these are just loose right now. So when you put it in, just make sure you push this all the way to the top so that it's pushed right against the top piece here. Okay. So set all of this aside to dry.